Stanley Kubrick biography, John Baxter. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely worth a read. Again, it's funny. Uh, there's a lot of good stories in it. Um, it's a bit hatchety-ish, as opposed to, say, the Labruto one. I've got that in back room over there. Um, well, in fact, I'll get it. Stanley Kubrick biography, Labruto. Uh, that's more of a praising Kubrick for there's a reason for all the multiple takes and everything and you know and mega filmmaker it's kind of yeah positive ish whereas the Baxter one is kind of a bit hatchety ish but it's still good it's loads of good uh, stories in it and uh, like when he were making Strange Love you know about the fear of nuclear war and all this and uh it's, it's just up to that moment about how he's, he, he was becoming a bit paranoid, like, you know, and then it says here, uh, Kubrick resembled a man trying to play chess on a rowing boat in the middle of a choppy sea. On the board, the rules are clear, the game a model of logic, but every few seconds a wave threatens to wash the pieces away or lurch of the boat and send them tumbling. Over the next few years, he would do everything in his power to steady the board. Potential disturbances would be damped down. He would install himself and his family in a wall mansion and see almost nobody. <laughs> Classic. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth a read, the uh, John Baxter one. Yeah. Uh, I got this cheap, two squid. Slasher movies by uh, Peter Normanton. It's all slashes and you get ratings for it all and uh, it's just, it's got them all in line, you know, loads of them. So uh, I've been reading bits of it. I've not read absolutely every page kind of thing, but it's, uh, from what I've read of it, all the reviews, yeah, classic, yeah. Uh, if you want to gen up on your nasties and all this, all stalk, not nasties, uh, stalking slashes, get that one. What's it called again? Uh, slasher movies, yeah. A to Z guide to over 60 years of blood and guts. So it's it's not messing about. Yeah. So there's that one. Uh, yeah. Ooh, classic, classic. I got this cheap, actually. Original price, 25 quid, 6 .99. This is the new updated mega version. Uh, keeping the British end up. Four decades of saucy cinema. It's all soft porn stuff that came out over years, like, you know. Uh, chapters on uh, Murray Millington and all that lot, you know, and it's uh, it's got loads of illustrations in it, and it's all you know reviews of it, virtually all films, like you know from sixties, uh, seventies, eighties, and I think a bit at nineties. Uh, but yeah, yeah, again, I've not read every page, but I've been going through some reviews, and it's uh, be quite good if you're into that sort of thing, like you know. So yeah. Saucy cinema, uh, keeping the British end up. So that's all right. Oh, I've got a thing here as well. I came across this. I, thought, I didn't even know I had it. Uh, Psycho Fort Novel. Yeah, by uh, Richard J. Noble. I think I had his Alien one once. He, he did a few of them, you know, and of course you get the classic, you know, alt, alt film in, in Fort Novel. Along which script? So if you if you're a psycho fanatic, one pen ninety five bloody hell when did that come out? Seven seventy four, right? I bet that's worth a bit, huh, actually. Yeah. So psycho for a novel. There's always that one for me. Uh, getting to uh, final two now. Final two. Nearly eighteen minutes. Classic. Seagology: A Study of the Ass Kicking Films of Steven Seagal by Vern. This is the revised edition. Uh, I got first edition. I've got uh, this one as well. He did another one, Yippee Ki Yay Movie Goer. That's worth a read as well. Uh, but the Seagal one, yeah, that's pretty good. Goes through all his movies, everything do with Seagal. Not all these movies, even his energy drink. Um, and again, it's all with a sense of humour as well. There's, uh, there's a good bit in uh, intro here. Uh, yeah, that's it. 
from uh, Nico when it, when one of guys says to him, uh, being yelled at by the bartender, Jack says, boy, you got some strange toilet habits. And then at bottom it says here, it, uh, it weasel writing. Seagull characters will have strange toilet habits in other films too. Most notably, the foreigner will be using a urinal when suddenly he'll jump out of a window without washing his hands or, as far as we can tell, zipping his pants. <laughs> and it said, what, what does it say on back? Uh, yeah. It says, the first edition of Seagology shook the very foundations of film criticism, broke their wrist and threw them through a window. This new, massively expanded and updated edition will do all that again, repeatedly, from several angles. Yeah. So, yeah, highly recommended uh, Seagology. In fact, when I, when I first read it, when it came out, I was so inspired with it, but I thought, because I were doing music vids then, and I thought, I'll do my next video on uh, Steven Seagal movies, like, basing, using Vern's book as my guide. Uh, came out all right. Uh, don't stand in my way. Yeah, check it out. And uh, finally, Blockbuster by Tom Shaw, or is it Sean? I don't know. It's uh, how the Jaws and Jedi generation turned Hollywood into a boom town. Uh, all from Jaws in mid seventies up to the present day. How, you know the blockbuster phenomenon and all this goes into all that. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the thing is, it's a bit of... Certainly uh, on, on the chapter on George and Star Wars, and it, and it mentions here in uh, intro, it's a bit of a repost to uh, Easy Riders Raging Bulls. Remember the... I've got it somewhere. I don't know where it is. Uh, the Biskin one. About all the Hollywood uh, movie brats of the 70s, how they all got uh, blasted out of the sky by Star Wars and Jaws and uh, the infantilization of American cinema and all this. It, it even had me half convinced. And, uh, but it's, it's a good bit of a riposte in here. You were saying, like, you know, it's uh, basically bollocks, like, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but there's a section here, it's fucking right, this. It says, because he's, he's on about Star Wars, yeah? Uh, talking about Lucas, well, he dreamed up ways uh, to escape when he was picking up Star Wars. And he says, that's how Star Wars felt too. Arriving in our backyards like the droids do in Luke's, as a clarion call to adventure, an invitation to another impossibly glamorous universe where movies like Star Wars happened all the time. Buzzing. And then the classic bit, which, of course, is roughly what happened. Was there any better time to be young and frill-hungry and go into the movies? The years that followed were all rather glorious. I suspect in time the generation who came of age in the early blockbuster era will come to be regarded with much the same hush respect that attend those who caught the Beatles when they were 17. What a great, what a grand piece of historical look it was to be in your early teens when Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. When Spielberg and Lucas were in their prime and when the very act of going to the movies seemed to come with its own brassily rousing John Williams score. <sighs> Fucking right, innit? You know, yeah. So that's it. Highly recommended. Tom Sean, Sean, Blockbuster, yeah. So there's my mini review of all the uh, film books and all that. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you later. No, 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 cut, cut, cut. That's not it. I've just discovered two more, actually. Good job I did, because these classics, these, I don't know how I bloody missed them originally, yeah? So, uh, yeah. First one. Disaster movies. The Ultimate Guide by Glenn Kay and Michael Rose. Yeah. <coughs> uh, 18 quid originally. I think I got it at a charity shop. Uh, but yeah, it's a classic this. Because if you're in, came out in 2007. 
Uh, but yeah, if you're into disaster movies, it's got all the disaster movies, everything, you know, from Poseidon Adventure, Turn Inferno, Earthquake, what have you, right up to kind of present day, yeah? So it's it's got them all in. And uh, it, it lists the good, the bad and the totally shit, yeah? Um, the reviews of uh, in here of uh, When Time Ran Out and uh, The Swarm are uh, absolute classics, classics. And uh, there's just this bit. Actually, the review of When Time Ran Out, they've got it, they've not listed it here. Page 119, and it says this at end of review. Page, here we are. Shockingly, this film was nominated for an Oscar for Best Costume Design. So someone on national television actually had to use the words when time ran out, an Academy Award, in the same sentence. <laughs> but that is a piss funny review, that. So, yeah, get hold of that one if you can. Disaster Movies, The Ultimate Guide, yeah. And my final one, definitely the final one. Focus on Hitchcock. Uh, edited by Albert J. Lavalle. I think this this is an Odin. This I got this from uh, a shop in Manchester. I think years ago, uh, 1972, and it's got various writers on it. It's got from uh, like Pauline Kael to Lindsay Anderson, Andrew Serres, Robin Wood, uh, various chapters. But the one chapter, uh, where is it? That's it. Inside Norman Bates by Richard Dergnat. Absolute, it's only about 10 pages. Absolute classic that. If you're a fan of Psycho, you've never read that article, definitely uh, give that a read. Yeah, classic. And there's some other good articles in it as well. So, yeah, focus on Hitchcock. So we can't have a, a thingy of boots without Hitchcock, can we? Like, you know, so, yeah, that's it, definitely. All them boots, all, uh, boot reviews and all that. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you later.